Good evening, friends, fiends, and night owl supremes. Welcome to A Bit Late, where the weather is still getting chillier and chillier and frostier and frostier, which is why tonight we are reading the story of King Frost. Might as well lean into the cold, right? Maybe we'll get warm. Who can say? Well, thermodynamics or something like that probably could. But this is the realm of magic and stories, so anything can happen. Tonight's story is another heartwarming but not at all heartwarming tale, so I do hope you have gathered around you quite a few blankets if that's your thing, or candles, lights, definitely some of those animal familiars, and coffee, tea, cocoa, whatever you need, because this story is very frosty, obviously. So settle in and sconce yourself in that blanket fort and get ready for the frosty story, the story of the Frost King. There was once upon a time a peasant woman who had a daughter and a stepdaughter. The daughter had her own way in everything, and whatever she did was right in her mother's eyes, but the poor stepdaughter had a hard time. So far par for the course, unfortunately. Fairy tales. Never kind to of stepdaughters. Let her do what she would, she was always blamed and got small thanks for all the trouble she took. Nothing was right, everything wrong, and yet, if truth were known, the girl was worth her weight in gold she was so unselfish and good-hearted. So not priceless, but worth her weight in gold. But her stepmother did not like her, and the poor girl's days were spent in weeping, for it was impossible to live peacefully with the woman. The wicked shrew was determined to get rid of the girl by fair means or foul, and kept saying to her father, Send her away, old man, send her away, anywhere so that my eyes shan't be plagued any longer by the sight of her, or my ears tormented by the sound of her voice. Send her out into the fields and let the cutting frost do for her. Wow, what a spiteful woman. I don't like her. In vain did the poor old father weep and implore her pity. She was firm and he dared not gainsay her. <laughs> Wait, so rather than gainsay his wife, he's going to let his daughter wander about in the cold and let the frost cut her down? Wow, okay. One of those is a little bit of discomfort at home, and the other one is you were talking about sending your child to certain death. But okay, okay, okay. So he placed his daughter on a sledge, not even daring to give her a horse cloth to keep herself warm with, and drove her out to the bare open fields. What? where he kissed her and left her, driving home as fast as he could, that he might not witness her miserable death. So I'm not sure if not giving her a blanket is supposed to be a kindness so that death comes quickly, or if he just didn't want his wife to know that he gave her a blanket that they maybe needed at home. Wow, I don't know, man. You always wonder about the fathers and kings of the stepdaughters in fairy tales and what they would do if they were actually around. You know, like Cinderella or whatever. And uh, I guess here's our answer, and I'm not loving it. Da 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 da, yikes. Anyway, deserted by her father, the poor girl sat down under a fir tree at the edge of the forest and began to weep silently. Well, I would have been crying, but then my tears would have froze. Suddenly, she heard a faint sound. It was King Frost springing from tree to tree and cracking his fingers as he went. Oh, oh, ow, I can feel that in my bones too. At length, he reached the fir tree beneath which she was sitting, and with a crisp cracking sound, he alighted beside her and looked at her lovely face. Well, maiden, he snapped out, do you know who I am? I am King Frost, King of the Red Noses. All hail to you, great king, answered the girl in a gentle, trembling voice. Have you come to take me? Are you warm, maiden? he replied. Quite warm, King Frost, she answered, though she shivered as she spoke. Then King Frost stooped down and bent over the girl, and the crackling sound grew louder, and the air seemed to be full of knives and darts, and he asked again, Maiden, are you warm? Are you warm, you beautiful girl? And though her breath was almost frozen on her lips, she whispered gently, Quite warm, King Frost. Then King Frost gnashed his teeth and cracked his fingers and his eyes sparkled and the crackling crisp sound was louder than ever. And for the last time he asked her, Maiden, are you still warm? Are you still warm, little love? And the poor girl was so stiff and numb that she could just gasp, Still warm, O King? Now her gentle, courteous words and her uncomplaining ways touched King Frost. Really? Why? I... Oh, man... 
and he had pity on her, and he wrapped her up in furs and covered her with blankets, and he fetched a great box in which were beautiful jewels and a rich robe embroidered in gold and silver. Wait, so the young girl is rewarded for continually denying and lying about the state of her well-being? She's literally freezing to death, but she's polite about how she's warm, so she's polite and lying, and that makes it, oh, she's such a good girl, let's reward her for making space for other people or accommodating them even though she's literally dying over it. I am so confused. Fairy tales confuse me sometimes, but ah well. Continuing on, and she put it on and looked more lovely than ever, and the King Frost stepped with her into his sledge with six white horses. He's the opposite of the Snow Queen in that he keeps her warm and gives her warm things where the Snow Queen drains the warmth, kind of, out of poor little Kay, or Kai, in the Snow Queen or just lets him freeze. Either way, she's not giving him any blankets. In the meantime, the wicked stepmother was waiting at home for news of the girl's death. But how would they know? Someone would have to watch her die. Anyway, and she was also preparing pancakes for the funeral feast. Those sound delicious, but morbid and oh no. And she said to her husband, old man, you had better go out into the fields and find your daughter's body and bury her. Just as the old man was leaving the house, the little dog under the table began to bark, saying, Your daughter shall live to be your delight. Her daughter shall die this very night. Hold your tongue, you foolish beast, scolded the woman. There's a pancake for you, but you must say, Her daughter shall have much silver and gold. His daughter is frozen quite stiff and cold. How is the dog saying this stuff or supposed to be saying this stuff? I need to live where dogs talk, clearly. But the doggy ate up the pancake and barked, saying, His daughter shall wear a crown on her head. Her daughter shall die unwooed, unwed. Oh, and I don't want to bark because I feel like that'd be very distracting, but imagine the dog barking, but in human speak. Hmm? Fairy tales. Fairy tale animals. Familiars. What are you gonna do? Love them. Anyway, then the old woman tried to coax the doggy with more pancakes and to terrify it with blows, but he barked on, always repeating the same words. <laughs> I do love that she's trying to coax the dog with pancakes. That might work for me. Might. I'm not saying it would, but oh my gosh, that sounds so good right now. Anyway, and suddenly the door creaked and flew open and a great heavy chest was pushed in and behind it came the stepdaughter radiant and beautiful in a dress all glittering with silver and gold. For a moment, the stepmother's eyes were dazzled. Then she called to her husband, Old man, yoke these horses at once into the sledge and take my daughter to the same field and leave her on the same spot exactly. Hmm, this is a mother holdo type thing or the fairies type thing. Hmm, we know how this goes because the dog told us already, but... And so the old man took the girl and left her behind the same tree where he had parted from his daughter. In a few minutes, King Frost came past, and looking at the girl, he said, Are you warm, maiden? What a blind old fool you must be to ask such a question, she answered angrily. Can't you see that my hands and feet are nearly frozen? Then King Frost sprang to and fro in front of her, questioning her and getting only rude, rough words in reply. Till at last he got very angry and cracked his fingers and gnashed his teeth and froze her to death. Ooh. Ah, yes. Because she spoke her mind and the truth about the state of her well-being, being freezing to death, she is punished. Ah, fairy tales. Gotta love them. But in her hut, the mother was waiting for her return. And as she grew impatient, she said to her husband, Get out the horses, old man, to go and fetch her home, but see that you are careful not to upset the sledge and lose the chest. Hmm. But the doggy beneath the table began to bark, saying, Your daughter is frozen quite stiff and cold, and she'll never have a chest full of gold. Don't tell such wicked lies, scolded the woman. There's a cake for you, now say. Her or her daughter shall marry a mighty king. At that moment, the door flew open and she rushed out to meet her daughter. And as she took her frozen body in her arms, she too was chilled to death. The end. Well, friends and beans, if you weren't cold, you might be now. That was a frozen heart worth freezing times two. It spread. It didn't stop with an act of sisterly love. It spread with an act of maternal neglect or selfishness. Uh, but wow. 
there we have it, a heartwarming <laughs> fairy tale that wasn't heartwarming at all, but I'll tell you what, I don't think I could say that I was warm when I was freezing. I have like five blankets around me right now, so I think I know what my fate would be. But what are some of your thoughts? Have you heard a story similar to this? I feel like we've read a lot of them on this channel so far, but none of them have had pancakes and wow, what a great touch. I think I need to make some right now. But I hope you're having a wonderful evening or night or sleep or day if you're listening to this in the daytime and getting on with whatever you need to do. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you soon. Now off to sleep and dream what you will or stay a while and enjoy another tale. Whichever you choose, I'll speak to you again. And until then, stay spooky and warm, my friends. Good night.